And then, as form emerged, there came a need to get the feel of the world around us. A need to reach outward. No, no, no. Coupled with the realization that for now, the authority to choose what we might reach for came from without and not from within ourselves. No, no, no. We moved in a pattern forever bending back upon itself. Hurt experiences that came at us from every direction in dizzying confusion. Let's open our books. scope of learning experiences came awareness of the order of things. That we must watch out lest we get our fingers burned. That we must be ready when opportunities to get what we want present themselves. We may dream but we make those dreams come true through our own efforts. The directions we may go are many, but the authority to choose what we may reach for now belongs largely to us. And we must make a mighty reach if we are to achieve our dreams, continuing our course upward, outward, into the world. This is the time of acute self-awareness, when the first person singular begins to know itself. I am, but what am I? I, I, who am I? Who am I? In the search for self, in the effort to bring ourselves into focus, we cannot evade the questions welling up from... We are important questions. But the answers... The answers are more important than the questions. What am I going to do with my life? How can I get what I want? Where do I go from here? Maybe I ought to be an auto mechanic. I like fixing up cars. Nothing else turns me on like this. When I'm blowing a horn, I'm me. I'm just not with it in math. English, social studies, okay. But math, yeah. Pretty good grades. Nah, go on and say it. Darn good grades. 
The bits and pieces of self-knowledge we have acquired quite casually at home, at school, at play, are the pieces of a puzzle we must now put into place. No one else can work the puzzle for us. We alone can recognize the relationship of the pieces which make up our own identity. But as the parts of our identity fall into place, the questions, what am I going to do with my life? Where do I go from here? Narrow down into one question, the big question. What am I going to do rather soon now, after this stage of my life is over, after I'm out of school? Can you answer the big question? For some, the answer may be easy. I'm gonna go on working for dad. After high school, it'll be Bernard and son. Right after graduation, Mrs. Robert Stiles. Join the service and see the world, or at least get that obligation out of the way. Some of us will have answers, but for others, there may be complicating factors. All the rest of the kids, they got him a job helped out around here. They didn't have any interest in school. He's smart. Don't you see? He could get somewhere. He could get himself a job, and that's just what he's going to do if I have my way. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? I'd just like to hear how you explain this report card. But, Daddy... Sally, you can't even get into college this way. Why won't somebody listen? I don't want to go to college. I told you I'm not a brain. Why do I have to try to be something I'm not? Son, take it from me, a fella can't go very far without an education. Now, your mother and I want you kids to have a chance we didn't have. But, well, you know how money is around here. Whatever the complicating factors may be, those who have the ability must also have the courage to reach outward into the world of learning to the educational opportunities beyond high school. But courage and ability aren't the only requirements. Cash is involved too. But don't get the notion that cash alone is the deciding factor. Scholarships, low-cost loans, and part-time job arrangements are available for deserving students who could not continue their educations otherwise. Of course, college is not for everyone as Sally, possessing an inner wisdom of her own, is so painfully aware. But how does a high school student make sure that the academic environment of college is not for him? By a feeling in his bones. By an awareness that one is having more than usual difficulties in the solid subjects that college requires are of these slots. Most of us are not yet so sure where our potentials lie, and so we keep all the avenues open. College? Maybe, although a diploma necessarily the miracle ingredient all of us need to go forward confidently into the world. Are you attracted to the professional atmosphere in which a dental assistant functions? Would you like the challenges which the inhalation therapist enjoys as a part of the medical team? Do you want the respect accorded those who have mastered complex skills? The satisfactions of being able to handle exacting details? Would you like to get in on the ground floor of some field such as program machining? Like to be a pioneer in one of the jobs of the future? Are you intrigued by the many different careers open in marketing management, retailing, merchandise display? These and other post-high school educational opportunities are often not available in many of the four-year colleges, but they are available at area technical vocational schools and community junior colleges. Sometimes they are offered as two-year college programs within the four-year state college or university setting. 
where we can acquire, in a relatively short time, marketable skills to start us on our way into the world of satisfying occupations. Let's move this tassel back just a little bit and get it out of your eye. Mm -hmm. Peter, look up at, look up at Grandpa. Just fine, everything's fine. Hold it, nice and still. It is important for those who aspire to such educational opportunities to do well in school and to get that high school diploma which helps ensure their acceptance at the school or college which offers the vocational program they wish to enter. Doing well in high school is just as important for those to whom the term commencement means exactly what it says the commencement of an educational process which, as with the technical vocational community college graduate, is likely to be an open-ended affair, a lifelong pursuit. Many young people, as you know, begin that quest by enrolling in four-year colleges. And many enroll for the wrong reason only because their parents expect them to. Because that's what everybody's doing. Or because they think it's a quick and easy way to get a soft, high-paying job. College in itself guarantees nothing. So a student who does want to go should have some good reasons. What then are some of the better reasons? I'm here because I want to be. I want to find out about myself. I want to know I can trust myself to get up on time, to get my studying done, to make my own way in the world. And I came to college because I wanted to be an educated person, worth talking to, living with, working with. Someone who's interesting to know and knows interesting people. And I came to college to find a man like that. No, seriously. Ever since I can remember, I've wanted to be a teacher. And that takes a college education. To be what, that's why you go. But we're not there yet. We're still in high school, considering the course our future should take. And now, enter parents, enter counselors, enter college-age friends. We need your help. You parents are very much involved in the decisions we make in the next few years. But please, give us the benefit of your thinking when we ask for it. But don't try to make our decisions for us. We need your counsel, and we need your support. <laughs> Brother, do we need your support. So talk to us frankly. Dad, I've been thinking about college. Already? Well, I'm already taking college prep courses. Well, yes, so you are. And I was wondering, when I go, what can we afford? Well, we've been saving ever since you were born. Enough for an expensive college? Well, maybe not. Maybe one of the better universities, if it isn't too far away, so getting you there and back a couple of times a year doesn't drain off too much. We expect to make some sacrifices around here while you're in school. Cut some corners. But a real expensive school would put too much of a crimp on the family finances. And then there's Jack and Susie to think of. We've got to have some money left for them when they reach college age. Yeah. Well, thanks for giving it to me straight. Now I know what I ought to do with the money I earn from summer jobs, just in case I get any notions about some upper crust college. Give it to us straight, folks. If we do right by ourselves during the years we're in high school, we'll be coming to you often for the advice and facts we need. So maybe we'd all better get the facts in mind. Do you know how much it costs to send a son or daughter away to college these days? Are you aware that scholarships, while they may be rewards for good grades, are also generally based on financial need? And that means the B is on parents, if they possibly can, to contribute the major part of college expenses. And you counselors, boy, do we need you. You're the ones who help us size ourselves up as possible college material who help us understand how the efforts we make now are going to pay off. John, you're doing well in everything except biology. 
Is there a reason for that that you can think of? Well, sometimes I wonder if my biology teacher doesn't have it in for me. Why is that? Well, I'm late handing in a paper, and it's a crime. I get a C on a test, and it's not good enough. She's always bearing down. John, is it possible that she's bearing down because she thinks you're capable of doing better work? Who knows what she thinks? Well, if that is the reason, she's doing you a favor. You say you want to go into pre-med. That's going to be tough to swing unless you get well-grounded in biology right here in high school. And now, you college-age friends, or our older brothers and sisters, what words of wisdom can you give us? Hold off into so we have a slot back behind the end of the garden. Right. Bring that car over here. Exactly. Learn to study while you're still in high school. I have enough trouble with a couple of roommates who happen to think college is a perpetual bull session. But if you have to learn to study with somebody yakking all the time, forget it. Suit yourself is my advice. Don't sign up for a college for the single reason that your parents went there, like I did. It's your life and your education. Map it out to suit yourself. I say get your grades up now. The school I wanted wouldn't have me. Had to go someplace else for a year and get with it. Knock off some A's and B's and get good enough to transfer here. I could have saved myself a lot of grief if I'd wised up in high school. Read. Read everything you can get your hands on. College catalogs, fiction, newspapers, the label on cats of bottles. You have no idea how much reading there is to college. So come prepared to book it. Oh, and not just on the weekends or before an exam, but every night. Read, read, read. Well, if you haven't decided what to do in life or what you'd like to study, don't let it bug you. Stay loose. That's one of the things college is for, to find out what you might like to be. Well, sample all kinds of things. One of them eventually will ring a bell and then you'll know. Well, maybe you'll hear two or three bells and make a false start or two. That's not fatal. Everybody hammers at you. These are the years of decision. All right, you've got to make decisions. Most of them don't have to be final. The only one that has got to be hard and fast is, don't drop out once you get there. We make our decisions on the basis of what we know about ourselves and what our parents, counselors, and friends can offer. If the decision is yes to college, then the question is, which college will it be? And how do we get in? Maybe even, can we get in? The answer is yes to that too. There are more than enough places for those who are serious about attaining a college education. More than enough in the nearly 3,000 institutions we have to choose from. Institutions such as the large private universities, the several hundred state colleges, the land-grant institutions, the technical institutes, the multiversities, as some of the larger state universities in metropolitan areas are called, the grassroots places, smaller, and for that reason, more attractive to a certain kind of student the community colleges with the academic transfer courses, as well as vocational offerings. The military academies. The church-affiliated colleges. The city institutions. the teachers' colleges, the public and privately supported junior colleges, the engineering schools,
and the liberal arts colleges. If we have prepared ourselves adequately, we don't need to worry whether there are places for us. What we need is a rational approach to selecting the school or schools which promises to be the most advantageous for us. College catalogs are the places to go to find what courses are offered, what financial aids are available, the admissions requirements, and the probable costs of attending the institution. It also makes sense to study one or more of the guides to various types of schools, just to clarify some of the comparisons you want to make. Also, these guides may provide helpful suggestions about how to go about making a college choice. But the college catalog alone will tell much of what you want to know, particularly if you take the opportunity to go over parts of it with the college representative who comes to your school. But there are questions involving personal preferences which we must wrestle with more or less on our own. Which is for me? Great summer school after high school graduation. My advisor says I should be well-rounded. They have a small student body, great teachers, and an excellent engineering curriculum. My parents are sending me to a small private school after in the I east. After I get my B.A. degree, I want to get away from home, live on I campus. admitted as a freshman at North State Teachers to begin the fall She'll be my sorority sister. Mother and Dad went there. That's where they met, and it's our church college. Junior college, my first two years, I can work for Dad. I'll finish it. If freshmen and sophomores would start listing their preferences about the kind of college or university they'd like to go to, there'd be fewer of us coming up to the all-important junior year still up in the air about college. As early as the junior year, we ought to be scouting out a half a dozen or so places we think might fill the bill. And then it's back to the counselor. He has information about the colleges and universities on our list that nobody else has, plus the scoop on us. John, this is the freshman profile of the first college on your list. Sort of an overall picture of what first-year students there are like. Pretty high. You're just barely in the bracket. Now, sometimes that's good. Keeps you reaching, makes you knuckle down. I think I'm knuckled down about as far as I can go. Besides, I've got to have time to work some, part-time. Maybe I'd better scratch that one and think about applying where I can at least hope for an A once in a while to keep me going. John, I think you show very good sense. We'll put this away and try another one. The fall of the junior year is also the time when we start on the agony alphabet. PSAT, SAT, ACT, and NMSQT. Those tests that help clear up any confusion we might have about what kind of college is best for us and which kind of college will be likely to have us. The testing time is usually announced or posted but a word here about whose responsibility it is to find out when and where such tests are given and whose responsibility it is to get there on time, rested and ready to take them. <laughs> Need a hint? Well, don't depend on your parents or your counselors. Don't depend on anybody but number one. In our junior year, if we can afford it, it's a good idea to work in some visits to the colleges still on our list. Hearing what the students have to say about the place and what they are like. Having an interview with the admissions people. And looking over the facilities we'll be living with in the future. By the time we are seniors and have the college boards or the merit test behind us, we ought to be on the last lap filling out applications. If we followed a rational course, we've narrowed our choices down to about three. One we'd like to get into, which might not accept us, our lot. One we'd like to get into, which probably will accept us, our almost sure bet. And one we'd be perfectly happy to attend, which we're pretty sure will take us our ace in the hole. <laughs> Filling out college applications is a do-it-yourself project. Everything except the confidential financial report that parents of students applying for scholarship aid must supply. The school wants to know about us in our own words, but read those applications carefully and follow directions to the letter so that everything required will be included or will be ready to be forwarded by your school. 
Well, there they go, our applications, the summing up of ourselves and the hopes for ourselves, signed, sealed, and sent forth. Joining the thousands of such applications on their way to college admissions offices all over the country. And we are back in the waiting time. The time when, as it was when we were reaching for the stars on the tree, we have ourselves braced for a no, 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 yet with a difference. That was a wild grab for something we didn't know how to handle. But educational opportunities beyond high school are within our reach. They are something we can learn how to take care of. Let us deliberately make ourselves ready to take those opportunities when the time comes, laying the groundwork now for a meaningful reach out into the world.